Hallelujah. Right, you may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greet your neighbor, say, how are you, neighbor? Again. Greet your neighbor, say, how are you, neighbor? Again. Hallelujah. Right, uh, this morning I will take you to the book of uh, Prophet Isaiah 58 from verse 6. What do we benefit from fasting? Ask your neighbor, what do we benefit from fasting? I will chase you people. Ask your neighbor, what do we benefit from fasting? Again? Yes, we need to ask ourselves that question. What do we benefit as people? As we are fasting. What do we benefit? There are benefits through fasting and prayer. I know many Christians, they have diluted fasting, converted fasting to a wrong thing. There is light fasting. I don't know who came with light fasting. There is half-day fasting. There is nothing like that. All those things are ungodly. Anything that Bible doesn't support, it doesn't come from God. Anything that is not biblical is satanic. It's just a confusion that people they are spreading to one another. One of the men in few years ago, a few years when our church was in Hebrew, he said to me 10 years ago, I heard that you fasted 40 days. Then I looked at him. He said, did you fast 40 days and finish it? Even Jesus was eating fruits. Hallelujah. <laughs> Even what? Was eating what? Then I looked at him with anger. I said to him, to hell with you, Satan. Why? Who, who, who gave you that wrong influence? Who made you to think evil about Jesus like that? The Bible says, a man shall not live by the bread only, but by the word of God. A man shall not live by the bread only, but by the word of God. If we acknowledge that we are fighting with demons, not people, we are going to value fasting and praying. If we acknowledge that only through fasting and prayer we can overcome, will value worshipping. God, through prophet Isaiah in 58, we hear God asking, is he not the fasting that I want? That you fast, you break chains. You fast, you get healed. You fast, you get delivered. You fast, God changes your life. But you yourself, you fast for wrong reasons. Fasting to kill one another. Fasting for your neighbor, for something bad to happen to your neighbor. Fasting because you need something evil to happen to somebody. 
Is he not the first thing that I want? Is God who's asking. That set you free. I know it is a long journey. Men, they are hiding because they are busy eating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you cannot fast, you can't fast. But I want to unite those who are fasting and those who are not fasting in one umbrella. Hallelujah. Can you say one umbrella? Again. Yes, you are fasting, you are not fasting. You must be united in one umbrella because we have only one God, one angel, and one Jesus. Hallelujah. If we can fast, let us not forget to pray. Fasting without prayer is not fasting. When you are about to fast, you must kneel down and tell God, I'm about to fast. Have mercy, be my strength. I know it is harder. Day one. Can you say day one? Can you say day one? Yes. Our church is founded through fasting and prayers. Hallelujah. If we fast as we are fasting, I know day one is not easy. And never think that you are going to reach where you are by yourself. You need Jesus. And Jesus cannot walk with you until you convince him. You cannot walk with Jesus until you convince him that you are really serious. You know what you are doing. Through fasting and prayer, God set us free. Set your family free. Set your kids free. Through fasting and prayer, God improves your lives. Hallelujah. There are blessings that come from God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. There are blessings that come from God. Then there are those things that they look like blessings. They are so attractive. Many people, they think that those people doesn't have a relationship with God. When they are living life, it means that they are doing the right thing. You end up seeing yourself as a Christian that maybe I'm doing something wrong. Hallelujah. Apostle, uh, 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 hallelujah. In 1 James in 2, verse 15. Sorry, in 1 John 2, in verse 15. He said, get out of the world. Make sure you stay away from earthly things. What the devil did when he wanted to convince Jesus. The Bible said he took him on the, on the, on the uh, 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 high, on the corner of the temple. He said, you see the world, how nice it is. I can give you everything if you bow down and worship me. Hallelujah. What separate Christians with Jesus is earthly things. Can you say earthly things? Again. Again. Now you think about earthly things. Those are the things that they are in your mind. It's not about money all the time. Living is more than money. That's why when you go on the street, there are those people who doesn't have place to stay. You know them. If you know them, shout amen. But when you look at them, they are very happy. They are very what? This one next to you is driving a latest car. 
You look at this man or woman, you see that there is sadness. That one who's supposed to be sad because he doesn't have a place to stay, that person is having peace. There is Jesus in that heart. If we don't invite Jesus to be part of us, we are going to destroy our lives. I pray that in these 40 days, you become strong and have courage. I know you are going to be tested and you are going to be tempted. I know when you look at food, uh, 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 you look at food, maybe fruits or whatever, you feel like if you eat, you do yourself a favor. I say to my girls during the week, if there's time whereby when you see a glass of water, you can even buy it with thousand US dollar. Because you'll think that if you drink glass of water, you have delivered yourself. God will never be part of us until us. We start taking him serious. Look on your neighbor, ask your neighbor, tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor, say neighbor. Do you need change in your life? You can do better, you people ask your neighbor, neighbor. Do you need change in your life? You can't be singing every day, my life is not fine. My life. What are you doing about your life? You can't be singing every day. Things are not fine. What are you doing about those things? Power must change hands. Our power changes hands. You, if you carry the armor of faith. Hallelujah. Aye. If you yourself you say, now, I have to change my spiritual life. Let me tell you something, you precious people. Worshipping is a gift. Not everyone is gifted that. Many have fallen. Hallelujah. And don't think that you, you are still standing and having this relationship with Christ. You are wiser than those who have fallen. No. It is favor. Hallelujah. Am I talking about here? Many have fallen. For you to be standing right now, it is a favor from above. Hallelujah. God decide through prophet desires. Is he not the fasting that I want? Let me tell you something. Without fasting, we don't have a weapon. Fasting is a weapon. There is time you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. But your prayers, they become weak. But when you fast and pray, your prayers, they become powerful. For us to reach our goals, we must understand that we live through prayer. Aye! You will see good things that will happen after 40 days. I need you to prophesy good things in your life. Say only good things in my life. You are talking like you're dead. Say only good things in my life. Again. Again. Only good things in your life. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. Hallelujah. If you obey. When you go to the gym, they say no pain, no gain. Some applies to you. 
If you are fasting, you don't feel pain. You are robbing. Fasting doesn't entertain anyone. I've seen a lot of pastors saying they are fasting. I remember I told you about the man who came to me saying we must fast. God appeared to him that we must fast. I was already in prayers. I remember again 2013, this man he came. He said to me, he was a, my brother from Nigeria, he said to me, I need as men of God to go to the mountain, we fast. I said, when? He said, Friday. We are going to come Sunday. I said, no, I'm ready. We left only in the morning. In the afternoon, it was very hot. He was changing the statement. He said, I left my office without being locked. I said, uh ah. -uh. So they didn't lock your office. Say the problem again is my assistant doesn't have a key. I'm having a key here. You see where it's going, huh? Hallelujah. If you're here, if you're here with me, shout amen. He said to me, the assistant doesn't have a key. The problem, I came with the key. We stayed again after noon, three o'clock. We say, you know, the problem is if I don't look. In that building, there are thieves. I knew he wanted us to go home. Hallelujah. But I kept quiet again because I wanted him to be specific. Then later he said to me, you know, we can go and look, then we come back. It doesn't work like that. The Bible said the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. You can't make an appointment with God. Then after that, you, 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 you change the story. Later again, you go back. God is not our friend. If you choose to fast, fast. If you choose not to fast, don't fast. Yeah, my tongue's about here. Turn up an If you choose to fast, fast. If you choose not to fast, don't fast. Yes, it's not a first matter. You have to value your problems and value your relationship with Jesus. I always tell people, I know, I know where I'm coming from. I'll never forget. The problem about Christians, you forget very easy where you are coming from. When you start putting ties and eating lettuce, you forget where you are coming from. Hallelujah! It's like when you are coming from villages or you are coming from a, 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 a rural places, when you reach city. Can you shout amen? You know there is, a, a, there is food for villages. If you agree with me, shout amen! Then you find someone cooking it in city. Then you start asking, what is this? You forget very easy. That thing made you to be who you are. You grew up eating that thing day and night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If we forget who we are, that's the problem. If we forget where we are coming from, that's the problem. I know where I'm coming from. What did Job say? Job 19.25. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. Aye. No matter I'm in this embarrassment, I'm feeling pain. But my Redeemer, what? Liveth. You must know who you are. Job was away that his redeemer liveth. He's not dead. You have to be aware who you are, where you are coming from, what made you to be a Christian. Don't forget your first day when you entered in church. That's to be foolish. Foolish. 
Look on the neighbor, ask the neighbor, do you remember your first day? Again? Maybe you came chasing a boyfriend or a girlfriend. That was the wrong reason to enter in church. But when you are inside, you must find the right reason. Hallelujah! Maybe you went there to see. But when you enter inside the church, you must find the right reason. There are many ways that God can use to bring you closer, but find the right reason. Don't allow the confusion to continue with you. You must find the right reason why you became a Christian. God is merciful. Hallelujah. Believe me, we are going to make it as a family, as a group, as a team. Those who are fasting and those who are not fasting, this angel must protect you and unite you and represent a, a, a you to God Almighty as one. Division doesn't make God to answer prayers. Division makes God to turn and go away. Hallelujah. Food is a useless thing. But before you, you stop eating, before you start fasting, food it looks like a, a useful. You know, many people are going to save money from bread. You're even crying when you buy your own bread. This bread. It was finished so quick. It's like there is a demon that is eating your bread. But you're the one who are eating it. Maybe you're thinking that maybe if it's a sliced bread, they didn't put a, 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 the right number of slices. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Some of you, you know how many slices in a bread. Shout amen. Yeah, I know you know that. huh? Ah. If you enter in shop, you buy, you say, this one is shorting. How do you know? You say, I know the slices. Albani is 16. Uh, this one is 14. You know all of them. If you can take that wisdom of counting bread and use it in prayers, you will improve your life. We waste our faith in wrong things. Apostle Paul, he said, food is for stomach. It doesn't have anything to do with God. Jesus, here he says, a man shall live with the bread, not by the bread, but by the word of God. Jesus was tempted. You're going to be tempted too. A man shall not live by the bread, but by the word of God. The word of God is life. In the book of 1 John 1, in verse 14, and the word became flesh. We are the flesh, but the word of God. Aye! Death we tried again to convince Jesus to abandon what he was doing. Demons will try to make you abandon what you are doing. Hallelujah. Uh, you precious people, hallelujah. Can you say in the name of Jesus? Can you say in the name of Jesus? It's better, you can do better. Can you say in the name of Jesus? If that light that is in you is no longer shining, Jesus is dead in you. You cannot fast. No matter you don't have a strong reason, you cannot fast. Let me tell something about gospel. Can you say gospel? Gospel expires. Be careful. What makes the gospel to expire? It is how you treat yourself when you become a Christian. Gospel expires. To many people. 
You hear them saying, I was a Christian, I was going to church every day. What happened? I don't know. It has expired. You can maintain your gospel through fasting and prayer. You can maintain your gospel through reading the Bible and meditating. You can't be a, a, a Christian, you stay a month without even reading the Bible. Hallelujah. Then you eat, 30, you eat 365 days. Are you a believer like that? No. You can't be a believer, you eat 365 days. You must take other days and give it to Christ. You see, your life, your, your life will, will balance. And your life will go in. When Jesus was down here, he fasted, he went to the mountain, he prayed, he was persecuted. He leaded. As a leader, he showed us the right way. That the right path for you to make it is for you to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Can you say in the name of Jesus? Ay, 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 say in the name of Jesus. Um, say, Lord, have mercy on me. Uh, say, Lord, have mercy on me. Uh, in the name of Jesus. One of my, uh, 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 my, my son, he said to me, what must I do in fasting? I said to him, abandon what you are doing. Win souls. Win what? Yes. I said, that's the only thing you can do right now. In these 40 days to April, you want Jesus to be closer to you. God is attached to any soul. When he sees a lost soul, remember in Luke 10, in verse, in verse 2, Jesus, he looked up, he, 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 he cried. They asked his disciples, what's wrong, master? He said, harvesting is too much, but workers are what? A few. Why did he say that? Because he knew that a lost soul, many souls are still lost. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. If Jesus fasted, there is no reason for us not to fast. If Jesus prayed, there is no reason for us not to pray. If Jesus was tempted, there is no reason for us to rejoice. If Jesus was persecuted, there is no reason for us not to be persecuted. Aye! We follow his footsteps. Tell the neighbor, we follow his footsteps. Again. Again. Yes, we follow his footsteps as our leader and our savior. He fasted, we must fast. He prayed, we must pray. I know there is devil. He will lie to you. He will say a lot of things to you. Breakthrough doesn't come easy. You continue following Albani, but you discover later how Albani destroyed your life. You continue following a food, not knowing that it is the way for devil to continue holding you back. You know, sometimes in life you have to Make tough decisions. Can you say tough decisions? Uh, you precious people, can you say tough decisions? Yes, in life you must make tough decisions sometimes. I say it uh, to someone, I say, if you are not yet ready to walk alone, then you are not a grown-up. There is time you sit down, you calculate, 
and you see that the life that you are living, you are not living it for people but for yourself. And the day when you become a failure, those people are the ones who are going to tell you how you failed your life. Are you aware of that? You are living for yourself. If you are not yet a grown-up, you cannot make tough decisions and say, now I need to change my life. I have to fast and pray. Hallelujah. I know many, they are compromising with you. Hallelujah. Why are you fasting like this? Do you think that God is happy when you're hungry? In other churches, they will tell you that Jesus has fasted for you. Ah, Jesus fasted for himself. He prayed for us. Hallelujah. He said we must what? We must do the fasting and what? And pray. He never said I have fasted for you. When they saw his disciples eating, they asked Jesus. The disciples of John the Baptist, they were fasting and, and praying. He said, don't worry. These ones, they are behaving like this because I'm still here. But there will be time I will live. They know. They have to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Can you say in the name of Jesus? Can you say in the name of Jesus? Say Lord Jesus. Hey mercy. Say Lord Jesus. Hey mercy. In the name of Jesus. This God is merciful. You'll never change your life, you precious people. Those who are fasting, those who are not fasting, I need you to be in one umbrella. Be very serious. I say to many people, don't jump any Sunday in these fastings for only six weeks. You know, people always absent in church, be not because of a reason. They were doing that even in school. They are the ones who are saying, teacher is a problem. Teacher is a what? Ah, my teacher is a problem. Not knowing that they are the problems. This morning I saw one of my friends, my brother from Nigeria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw him carrying goods again, moving. There was a time I went and defended him. He was fighting with these uh, 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 white people. I thought that they were wrong. I was defending them. He was crying about everything that was wrong. Then I had sympathy. I went there. I spoke to them. But today when I saw him again carrying things, I said, ha, the problem is this one. Hallelujah. He doesn't see that is a problem. He thinks that wherever he, he arrives, people are wrong. Let me tell you something. As long as you don't see problem in your life, you cannot rectify. If you don't rectify the problem in your life, you cannot correct it. As long as you don't see the problem about what is happening in your life, you cannot correct it by fasting and praying. We know where we are coming from. Let us not forget where we are coming from and let us not forget who we are. 